Hey guys, Justin here again. Um, I guess uh, it's time for another upgrade to the computer. So um, I've got a couple of them set up for this round here. Um, so I guess without any further waiting, why not get started here? Um, obviously first thing has got to go is the side panel here. I decided, um, I guess it kind of goes without saying, I've been talking for a while now that, um, that I wanted a GPU to put in here. And uh, wow, look at that dust. <laughs> Um, no, that I've been wanting a GPU for in here, and, uh, sorry, my OCD is bothering me. <laughs> um, so obviously that's one of the upgrades we're making here. Um, with all the videos and everything we're making, I am in need of more storage right now also, so there's that. Um, and then, I guess I wanted to go with a little more known name as far as reliable power supplies go. So I'm going to change that out tonight too. Um, so I think the first thing I want to do is probably get this back panel off of here. would probably be a good idea too because um, we're definitely going to need back there. And you're not supposed to come all the way out. You're supposed to be uh, captured. You also come all the way out. Hmm. Okay. But anyway, if you would clear yourself from there, please. Didn't think I'd actually grab any threads with you. Oh, there we go. The much required side panel falling off instead of just coming off easily. Um, so there's that. Done. Actually, I'm going to set you to where those screws are setting upwards also, so I don't have to worry about you falling out of there. Um, no, because... Yeah, the one of the major changes I wanted to make here was putting a little more drive space in. So I've already pre-grounded myself here, so I shouldn't have anything else built up on me. Um, we need to... Well, let's see. This should be fine, because I'm going to have to pull all of these uh, cables back through here again. And I don't know... That has to be SATA there, I would say. Yes, anyway, it's going to be fun pulling all these uh, cables and stuff back out of here. So I'm going to start by getting that out of the way, and then we'll probably go ahead and install some drives before I put the graphics card in and get that much more stuff in the way, I'm going to reroute our, or reroute all the power cables. So, just pulling screws out of the back of the power supply here. I know I said that I was going to try to set up with a, uh, a second camera here, but it turns out that that plan is no longer viable because that second camera became my, uh, my audio recording device, which is right down here, and it's powering this guy. Um, turns out my original idea for, uh, for phantom power to that mic did not work out, so, let's see, those are out of there, okay, so now, I already did flip this over once, <laughs> so it's, it's real tight to get in and out of here with that fan in the way, but I'm gonna try to do it again without pulling that fan out of the way. Hopefully, my new power supply, I didn't even think about this, hopefully the new power supply is shorter than this thing is, and it won't be as difficult to get in and out of here. Because you can see there's a little piece of metal over here that stops you from being able to pull it out sideways. Um, I'm kind of wondering if maybe I won't be better off to pull maybe at least that cable right there on the end. Because I don't know if it's got a connector on the bottom side. A little retainer of some sort? I don't think so. You should hopefully back right off of there. Okay. And it doesn't look like I broke anything, so that's good. Um, so yeah, that'll make it a little bit easier getting this guy up out of here. <clears throat> Let's keep clear of the board. And then we can kind of work on routing all those cables back out after we get this out of the way. Okay. There's... Power supply free. And, okay. So now we go. Okay. So we know for a fact that that 24 pin is going to be part of it. I'm going to go ahead and pull it off of the motherboard here. That's right. And I forgot this being one of my chief complaints about not being able to support the motherboard while handling that. Uh, let's see. And then the 8 pin, wherever it is. Let's figure out my best way to get back into this guy. Okay, 
guess we should be clear. There we go. And then we just need to undo some of the cable management back here. Actually, I feel like a lot of the work from this point on is probably going to be done from the back side. So let's go ahead and rotate this around so you guys can see what all's going on here and hopefully not knock my power supply screws off into oblivion. Uh, I feel like that is dished out for a reason there. <clears throat> okay. So there's that. Uh, so continuing with this. This is the riveting part of the build here. More cables, yay. Oh, and maybe you're kind of getting a peek at everything that's going into this right now. This, um... These Velcro, Velcro cable management straps have been a real lifesaver as far as being able to quickly, you know, put things together and take them apart and Let's see, this tray's got to come off of here anyway. So we'll go ahead and take you out of the way. Is that captured? That is captured. Okay. So, let's see, 8 pin. Oh man, was this the one I had to take the grommet out for? It is, isn't it? I'll bet you it is. So let's go ahead and get that over with now. There we go. And we'll get to deal with that nightmare again here in just a bit. Okay, there's that. Now we should be able to get you back through. There's that. Now you're down here, and I need to get these undone because 12 pins gonna have to come out through there. Okay, I'm going to assume. I'm not going to assume. I'm going to make sure. Because <laughs> the other one should be SATA power that we're going to have to pull back out of here. Yeah, now the mess of wires comes free. Actually, is all... Yeah, so all four of these cables are part of what we're pulling here. Kind of weave those back in and out of wherever they decided to weave themselves into and out of. Got that down there now. And then SATA power has to come out, which should be these right here. Because while it's probably not a big deal to replace these cables, I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyway. Okay, so that, I'm not even sure what that was for, but I'm gonna leave that out and hopefully I'll remember to plug that back in. And then just unplugging this out of the back side of the drive. There we go. At which point, we should be fine. Let's go ahead, leave this all lay out here. Okay, now we just need to feed them back through. This one should be fairly easy. <clears throat> Especially seeing as the connector itself is free and I could just do this. There's one down. these ones we actually have to feed back through. Get all the way on the end over here. Make it nice and easy. There's that. And then the 8 pin. And the other power supply out of the way. Okay. While we're Dealing with the process of ripping things out. We also know for the graphics card, some of our expansion slots in the back here have to come loose. So it should be this one. And this is where, if you've worked on computers much, you know I've cheated. You may have had this GPU installed already. But, you know, I wanted to make it like believable here that I've never uh, done or I've never had this in the computer yet so I probably should have tightened this thumb screw down past actually being thumb screwable and you would have believed me more but now it's too late so um, and this expansion slot comes out 
Um, so, I mean, I guess future things I want to get into on this here, obviously, um, I'm not quite done yet. I've already actually started planning the next major upgrade to this computer, which is probably going to come maybe middle of next year, uh, kind of depending on how budget stuff works out. But let's see, you were, can you plug into either one? You can. I believe you were in this one. Oh, this is USB. Okay, so I'll bet you both of them are 2.0. Yeah. So really either one of these will work. We're going to stick you... Actually, I'm not going to stick you back in there yet because I still have to stick a power supply back in. Um, that'll be the other interesting thing to find out here is whether or not... Um, whether or not this power supply is going to be longer and I'm going to have to maybe possibly get rid of that fan down there. That fan I really wanted in the build for um, positive pressure. But... we have to get rid of it for the power supply then I guess that's just how it's gonna go Let's see. So we have you and I don't figure I'm gonna have to worry about electrostatic shock going uh, glass hopefully that would be weird and then we have a SSD because I wanted some uh, kind of intermediate speed storage in between the system drive and the hard drive so that I could have something I could edit off of that was a little bit quicker than trying to edit off of a hard drive because um, I don't know it's nice to be able to get things to render out a little bit faster and all that sort of thing and um, keeping large amounts of uh, files on that system drive is going to end up slowing it down eventually and now I'm realizing my first mistake here um, I need to get hardware again for the case out here's that hardware and then we'll put this cable back here away now <clears throat> okay so again the, um, the upgrade I alluded to because of rendering, I would like to uh, do an upgrade to the CPU and the, okay, I don't know what I'm going to need those for, hopefully nothing today. Um, no, I want to do an upgrade to the CPU and the motherboard, and I'm very quickly running out of SATA connectivity on this motherboard, so we may end up doing a combo, you know, upgrade this computer to something a little more happy with rendering. Granted, you know, the 8700K is no slouch when it comes to that, but I want more. <laughs> uh, there's a quick power supply screws. You know, I should probably be looking at the box because the box told me what was what. Um, yeah, and then and then doing a uh, a NAS at the same time. Okay, so it should have like almost a rounded looking head to it, and these are probably the three and a half inch drive screws, which I will need. Um, and then we will also need the sound dampers for those. And I'm running out of bags in here, so it can't be that much more further down those probably aren't it either so it's probably going to be the last bag of screws to pull out of here zip ties I don't I don't need you you can stand there actually on second thought do I have nah I've got a bag that's got some zip ties in it but I don't think they're quite that long, so these probably won't fit down in there. Um, these should be it, I believe. Okay, so set you back off to the side here. <clears throat> and then, before I go screwing this thing in, I'm going to make sure that the threads are right on this. say so. Ok. 
Okay. So now we know we need to set this up to here. Of course, we'll get it all screwed in here. Say again, this looks like a number two Phillips. And indeed it is. Okay, so now we just need to get the other one started here. If you would sit still and not roll off the table, that would be appreciated. started. Cut more out of here. One for you. For you, and then we can actually start tightening these down. Again, no real torque required for these here. This um, the SSD is not going to vibrate or anything like that, so you really don't have to worry about getting it super tight. You just need to snug it. So get that on there. And for the time being, I'm going to leave that off. And then do our next three and a half drive. There's a hair in that one. Okay. Get these. For those now, let me just kind of stick those in here. And I'm not sure yet. So these look to be mounted. Closely to the back side of that. So I'm gonna guess. Is that what I went with? say so and actually probably could do that give myself a little more room to hook things in because I've got plenty of space back there <coughs> so let's go there's four holes right there There. Okay. And now, I can actually start mounting it. Okay. 
get you those started. Two more of these. And again, because these are rubber mounted, we're not going to get them down super tight. It's just going to be snug. The other thing I'm trying to do here is to keep the drive spaced a little more apart so that what little bit of heat they do generate isn't generated one right on top of the other. Let's see here. He's right on top of there, aren't they? Okay, there we go. And see the difference in depth from how I've mounted them, and that bugs me. So let's uh, let's pull your data cable off of there, and I will move you back because, again, I am obsessive compulsive. <laughs> and while we got you out, knock some of that dust off of there. really quickly here it's almost like they set these up with multiple holes with that in mind to give you a little more room to plug things in then we get to do some fun uh, drive formatting and everything and actually I might if I happen to think about it I'll walk you through that also so that you know how to do it because I can use OBS to screen capture that <clears throat> but yeah, the um, the other thing that I was thinking of doing besides just upgrading the CPU and motherboard in this is taking this CPU and motherboard and switching it over to a um, to a NAS so that I can do like some external storage because it's hard to find decent cases that are. Um, airflow friendly anymore because a lot of them block off the front panel and like that's I want airflow I could care less about aesthetics they're nice don't get me wrong but they can also be done just fine without so the case that I am eyeballing because for th uh, my mother or my uh, my CPU that I want uh, The manufacturer that I want to get the motherboard from, they are all EATX motherboards, and this case is not set up to support EA EATX. So, um, unfortunately, I'm sure I'm going to have all sorts of fun routing power cables in that also, but um, I mean, that kind of results in me having to change cases and everything. And that case is a little bit dr limited on drive space. Of course, between now and then, something else may come out too, and then I'll end up changing again what I want to do, but we'll let that happen when the time comes, I guess. Okay, both those are in. Um, let's get the power supply down and in place now, because I need to route the 8-pin cable before I put the cover back in place, and hopefully the power cable for this thing is, is long enough. Also, I guess the other thing I should have done here was been a little bit better about introducing stuff. Um, I ended up just going with another one of the uh, the HGST drives that I had originally, and now I guess they're labeled as Hitachi, um, which is who made HGST in the first place. Um, I went with their um, four terabyte because it seems like four terabytes the the sweet spot right now for price per gigabyte. But, I mean, these drives are like 100 bucks. They're enterprise-grade drives. They're 7,200 RPM, so they're, you know, the faster of the, the hard drives. Um, HGST rated these, I think, at like a 2 million, mean, or 2 million hour mean time between failure. Um, so, I mean, as far as reliability goes, I mean, you can have these drives for less than 100 bucks, and 
why would you not? That's that's eight terabytes there. I'm gonna be good for a little while in video space because I'm not doing I'm doing 1080 videos right now. Um, this one is about halfway filled up. So, but I mean, when I start stepping up to like 1080, 60, and that sort of thing, maybe I don't see myself shooting in 4K right away. I, I honestly, I, I care more about the frame rate than anything. Um, I have shot some 1080, 60 off of my phone, uh, which is what I was going to use as the second camera here. Um, but yeah, I mean, those will take up a little more space. But for now, these HGST drives are, you know, good for space. I've got plenty to, to work with now. Um, all the games and everything I've been putting on this thing, too. Like, I have, like, 250-some games in my uh, Steam library right now. So those have, those have taken up a decent chunk of space also. So I'll probably separate that off. I'll probably make, like, one video drive and one video game drive. And, uh, yeah, we'll have plenty of space to work with both of them here. Um, the other thing that I got was the uh, the Samsung 860 Evo. Um, it's a one terabyte drive, so we've got eight terabytes here, nine terabytes, and the M the NVMe M.2 SSD puts me up at about nine and a half terabytes in this computer now. So, obviously, the need for a NAS is not far away. <laughs> if I'm gonna expand much more, I need, I need something standalone to take care of this. Um, yeah, now we... Uh, now we can move on to the power supply here. It is a, well, UVJ sends a nice bag for the cables. The cables are all down the box. Um, so can I pull that out of there? I can. Okay. So all of our spare cables are going to go in this bag here. But uh, I ended up going with an EVGA Supernova 750G2 for the power supply. Because this thing has really good ratings as far as like the reliability of the power supply. So, for a little bit better longevity, and this thing actually looks like it's probably gonna be bigger than what the other power supply was, which is gonna be very unfortunate if it kills my ability to have that bottom fan in there. And I think it probably will. <laughs> um, so just a slightly larger power supply and I can no longer fit that fan in the bottom. Okay. Well, that sucks. It was nice knowing you positive pressure. Now we're going to go to neutral pressure, I guess. Um, it was worth a try. <clears throat> they have... Check and make sure there's no plastic or anything on this anywhere. Um, this power supply is also fully modular, which is nice. Um, That'll be a nice little benefit to that one. Yeah, so now we get to remove this fan next. Okay, so let's get you out of the way because we're going to have to put the tower back down on its side again. And actually, a lot of this stuff's going to have to probably get shuffled around here. I suppose what I could do is move it up to the top here and have a second fan on top blowing air out. Let's do that. So the second of the module vent covers goes there we go <clears throat> okay but I think I was talking earlier about wanting to upgrade the air cooler on this Somehow, still got a little bit of dust in through there. Not perfect, this thing, I guess, which is fine. Um, let's see, let's actually, yeah, this will do. Be right back here. Take the screws out of the bottom of this thing and then move it. Then hopefully I don't completely forget to unplug this thing as well. 
That would be awkward. Kind of sucks too because I've already got cable routing all set up for this thing. I have to find new routes for the cables. Let's see you there. And then the last one is right here. Not entirely sure where I had this thing plugged in at on the back side, but apparently it's plugged in on the back side. Well, anyway, we're done with the underside of the case here. Let's put the dust filter back in place. <clears throat> okay. All right, we'll bring this back up. <clears throat> this thing's getting a little hefty. Let's see, where are you? And we'll just kind of play follow the cable. Oh, well, it was that simple. I just ran it back there to get rid of some of the excess cable. Okay. Uh, now, let's see, we want struts up and the cable probably along the back side. So now, it should be easy enough to put up in here. there and my struts are out I'm not gonna do that a million times again hopefully it seems like I've gotten a little more competent in the time that I've building or I've been building computers I want to seem incompetent forever <laughs> come on you why don't you start please start Okay, maybe I'm incompetent. I'm getting beat by a screw here. There's that started into place. Hopefully you'll be fine here for a second. Don't tear yourself up too bad. And fan corner, please don't fall off. I suppose that's a, another very possible scenario there. Put these things up as close to one another as I can here. Okay. There's that. This one. Okay, we'll make sure we kind of slid as far to the rear as possible. So that way, if we ever do get into a situation where I end up pulling the, the CD drive out of the front and putting a third fan up in the front of the case here, there's, I don't have to like shuffle this fan around to, to get to that point. I don't plan on taking the CD drive out of this anytime soon though, because I'm still using it for like ripping CDs and that sort of thing, so I can get a fully uncompressed version. Okay. There's our fan back in place. Where are we gonna power it from now? And then we can get our uh then we can pick back up on getting our power supply put in and Continue on with where we were at there. Ooh, am I gonna need a fan splitter? CPU option. I may end up needing a fan splitter here. I believe we will. Okay, no big deal. Let's see. That's what we'll do. Is that, that's not CPU fan, is it? Thing is that a CPU option? That is CPU fan. Okay, so I don't want that one either. Do I have to go to my dreaded arch nemesis back there? Because I don't want to. Hmm. 
What other options do I have down here? Not much. I'm thinking of maybe just routing back through here, underneath that fan, and back over here to a splitter. That's probably how I'll try and work that one. Because I really learned to hate that connector back there. <laughs> uh, let me get a fan splitter here. I don't know. Should I suffer for much better cable management? I think maybe I should. Because that's going to put it down in the air path. Okay. Screw it. Here we go. This fun again. Which is now even worse because I've got this fan in the way here. Can I just slide you back off of here? Because I remember you are horribly loose. pressure on there okay and if you would just come loose there I'd slide you back out of the way here at least up and over there you go let's see you're actually inside of the fan if you could not be that'd be great okay there we go give me a little more room to work back here So much disassembly just to reassemble again today. Okay, so what I'm thinking is to plug that in up here and then route the splitter into the back and we'll plug everything in in the back. Okay, so I want to have it that way. Ah, that was much less painful than last time. Okay. If Yeah, stay up there, please. <laughs> uh, so let's pull you back through. I'm not sure. I believe you are this cable. All right. Look at that little bit of tail hanging out of there. It'll stay back there. Um, let's see. So we need to plug... You in to right there. And then where's my other fan? Let's see. I should be all done working back in that area for now. No, I'm gonna need back in there for the eight pin. Okay, so I'm gonna leave you up there. Uh, and then for the time being, though, I need you back out of the way just slightly here because I need to route this. through this opening, through this grommet. Okay, let me just pull this back through. And that should take care of all of our cable for this one. And then we just plug you into the splitter as well. And hey, look, everything's all fine and dandy. <clears throat> That'll maintain our positive pressure. Now we're on to putting the power supply back in. I've got so much stuff on, unhooked in here right now, I'm gonna forget something. <laughs> I know that it's gonna happen. Let's see. So you, let's see, we want the fan down. Because the fan, okay, so one of the things I screwed up in my earlier videos, this fan is your intake. It, it, it intakes air through here, and then it's gonna blow it back out through the back of the case. So 
you want this facing the cooler air, which, I mean, if you have, if you're not, like, sucking up tons of dust or anything, then you want it pulling air from outside the case, because inside the case you get the CPU, the GPU, all that sort of stuff creating heat. So, ideally, if you can manage to make it happen, you want this fan down, uh, facing, the, facing the bottom of the uh, case. Just double checking to make sure that the power supply is also off, because I don't want it on first thing when I... Get all this stuff in here. I don't want you pinched by the power supply either. So now that that's in place, I can put you there. Plug you back in before I forget you. Okay. I think you should be in all the way. Wish there was some way to support this lower portion of the board. See, that ought to be good enough. I don't use USB 2.0 for much anyway. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, so now we can screw the power supply back in, which is to be done with, did you include me, hardware EVGA? Because if not, I know I've got some spares sitting around here somewhere. Matter of fact, I feel like just a little bit ago, I pulled some out of the bag over here and went, no, I'm not going to need these for anything. So here's all the fun cables. <laughs> so there's that. What's this? That's an interesting little piece. What is that? Oh, is that... Looks like your own connector for 24 pin in case you need to replace the connector. Or maybe if you want to sleeve your own cables, I'm not sure. Anyway, let's... Okay, you know what? I'm going to leave you out because you're going to be the next bit of fun I get to have here. And then for now, let's put you down on the floor. And we'll get the screws in the back of this power supply and we'll carry on with life. bad job of getting everything lined up to start with here. Let's see. Granted, there's not a lot of wiggle room back here for this power supply either. Just get them started here. Am I started? I'm not started. Why are you not starting? Please start back into your new home. Can you please don't be cross threading? Why are you being difficult? Okay, that should be the next one. Kind of noticing, I don't believe the threads in this power supply are pre-cut. Either that or they've been painted over because these screws aren't going in very easy. Let's see. Is that? No, that's one right there. Okay. Kind of hard to see back here. Got bright light coming from the other direction. I guess you can tell how much force it's taking to actually start cutting those threads because of how much the case is moving. Let's see, and then put you right down here. Yeah, but I want to do... Okay, so the other thing I might be getting criticized for is um, putting a CPU cooler on this when I'm or planning on changing out the CPU and the motherboard anyway. And that is because the NAS, I want to be able to... I want to be able to overclock the CPU even for the NAS because why would you not want the NAS to run faster? 
That's something else I need to look into too. Like I haven't, there's a lot of channels out there dedicated to building gaming computers that are fairly, you know, out there and easy to find. I need to see if I can find some stuff on uh, working on, you know, almost network type stuff because level one text is obviously pretty good. Like Linus has teased some of it from Linus Tech Tips. Um, they were troubleshooting the whatever super expensive computer they were working on at the time. Uh, dollars, shock factor, right? Um, but yeah, we get to see a little bit of the backside of troubleshooting. I think it was Linux at that point. But there's not a lot of that out on the internet, and I would like to see more of it. Um, so maybe if I can figure some of it out and actually consider myself, you know, at least somewhat knowledgeable on the subject, maybe I can kind of gear my channel towards some of that type of stuff even. Okay, so there's that. Um, we need to find our 24 pin, which I assume is going to be you. So I guess you're split up into two different connectors, it looks like. for plugging into the power supply, I would assume. Oh boy, this could be interesting. Am I gonna have enough cable? I really like these braided cables that EVGA did, but if they don't reach, then um, we're gonna have to go a different route. Go ahead and do my best to support you here. Because that's what I'm here for, is to support whatever help everybody needs. <laughs> no, seriously, if you got any questions, ask them, I'll help. <laughs> like, why are you doing this, you idiot? Do it the other way. If you could leave me a few of those, I'd, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, didn't split any cables back here. That's impressive. Okay. Twenty-four pin cables are always some pretty serious stuff. Stuff. Okay. Trying to get them to maneuver the way you want them to is lots of fun. Let's see. So I'm gonna route you straight down and around the back back here. See, a lot of this is probably just extra cable, but I want to have you a little bit closer to the motherboard, so I'm going to poke through down here. Okay, so we're going to reach. Good news, guys. It's not as bad as I thought. And all the nice braided parts are going to be on the back side of the case, so that's cool, I guess. Um, let's see. Motherboard is right here, so I need to have you right here. Which is great, because I'm going to put the stuff that's going to be in the way in first, right? Uh, so I guess we'll leave that for just a little bit later here. Um, what else we got up here? VGA, CPU, so my eight pins up here. Where is CPU? Got a SATA, which we will use later. That looks like Molex. No, that's SATA also. Okay, so there's a couple SATA cables, which we'll need. Uh, let's see. That is also coming up as VGA, VGA, CPU. Here we go. <clears throat> Which is the one we really need to get done here because I need to get it passed through this grommet, this grommet back in place, and then I'll be done with hating my life. Uh, not looking forward to this at all because especially with that fan cable in the way now. You probably move that back off to the side and out of the way a little bit, hopefully. No, it's still right in the way. All right, come on, you. This way.
I don't know what kind of stress I'm putting on this cable right now. I'm just going to unhook it here. And then flip it around. And then plug it back in again here. But I want you. Okay, so I need to have you like this. Like, like this. But I need this around back here I need this flipped around the other way there we go that's better okay. I don't know what kind of havoc I'm wreaking on these poor little cables Probably not the good kind. There we go. And now that is back in place and out of the way of the 8-pin cable. All right. So now, we'll take a CPU power connector. Flip through the grommet. It's almost like they foresaw the issue that we had with the other connector so I can probably I probably could have put this grommet back in to start with which I think I'm going to try to do it's maybe a lot less trouble without that 8 pin cable running through it might make that a lot easier who knows maybe not we're going to try it. You just want to be on this side. There we go. And there's our grommet back in place. Just make sure the cables are all nice and pulled back through there. Okay. Cool. So there's that. Now we'll try to get our 8 pin back through there again. Thank you, EVGA, for making this a lot easier. <laughs> okay. Even though now, like, putting this in place is going to be all kinds of fun. It's not your fault. It's mine for trying to do this with fans installed. else can I put you here? It's back over this way. There we go. That'll do. And let's see. So if I just get you to pull 180 here. side and I cannot see side number two anymore hmm, here we go come on little guy you can do it you're almost there is that it that's it okay here we go that's back in place wonderful and now we'll just get you kind of work back around here Hopefully without breaking anything. Uh, okay. And our grommet is in place, our cables are in place, so that's all set. All right. So that's that. And now we just gotta run the eight pin cable. 
preferably underneath everything else here. And end up back through here again. Okay, and I'm starting to think VGA might be what they're calling PCIe. It's peripheral. There's another CPU. So I guess if you get two 8 pin CPU connectors, it's got you covered here. There's even more SATA. This thing definitely has more hoops. Hopefully, you're okay, little guy. Um, they're a lot more resilient than what <laughs> conventional type are. Yeah, VGA has got to be PCIe. Yeah, because there's your 6 plus 2. Okay. All right, so now we know we've got that. So then, in that case, I'm going to leave CPU in place while we put in a couple of 8 pins here. And then we'll kind of wire these things back to front. That was also VGA, wasn't it? Okay. So let's do one here. So there's one. And you are going to go on through the back here. Back through there. Clear of everything back here, pull you straight out, feed everything through. Okay. And because this graphics card needs two of these, we'll run another one, which should be you. Okay, and you're going to be the one that goes into the power supply down here. You are the one for in the actual GPU. So once again, we'll run you back here. Get you started through. I have GPU right here again. One here, and then we can do CPU, which I believe should be you. Shut that back through. We'll have you right here. Careful to take that kink out of it there. Just a little bit. Okay. And then we'll plug motherboard in here. We need it around the other way. So let's do like this. And then preferably. So this is just kind of a mess. Okay. There we go. I don't think there's any way to really pretty that up much more than what it is. And then hopefully, other than SATA down the bottom, I shouldn't need much else. Now, I think. What we should be able to go ahead and do next here. I think we're set up in that corner now. Get this cable back in place just a little bit more. We're set up in this corner now, so I should be able to take this thing and put it where it's supposed to be. And then I guess pull its cable back through a little bit. Sorry for any change in angle there. The GoPro battery just died on me. Yay, battery life. <laughs> um, let's see, where were we at here? We were starting to... 
Actually, I think we just got everything connected up and we were, we put that back in place, pulled the cable back through. Okay. So I think the next thing we need to do here is get SATA ran through. And then, that's right, that's right in front of me. So we should be done with PCIe. And that way we can start running SATA power to the drives and uh, whatever that extra little connector was in the back. And I think, what does this one have? Three? Okay. So we're going to need two of these because we've got one, two, three. What is that? Yeah, three, four, five things now. Five things that need SATA power. So, um, whereas before we could get away with just one of these, now we need two. Data one is going to be you. Probably should have done the bottom ones first here, so I had the light. That would have been nice. Oh well, there's that twenty twenty hindsight again. It's been the story of my life. <laughs> through and then say to two okay. say to two can go right to there and again we'll pass you through also I'm using so many more slots on this power supply than what I did on my old one. Way more cabling on this thing now than what there used to be. So, cable management back here is going to be all kinds of fun. Okay, I'm just kind of preliminary cable management here. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go ahead and install the, the SSD now. I don't think the cable's not going to fit behind that anyway, so it's just going to kind of be out in the open. Just unscrew that back into place. Okay. So now comes the fun part where we start running power to things. So we've already got our 24 pin and our 8 pin in, so these are all done. Now we just got to plug in PCIe and the two SATA cables. This is all that I'm going to be plugging in back here. Um, Oh, the other thing I can't forget here is I need another SATA data cable. Um, two of them, actually. Let's see, I need to figure out where I've got those at. Okay, so I got lucky and managed to find myself just enough SATA data here um, to, to make this work. So, hopefully, this ends up being all I need, because otherwise I'm going to be in trouble. So, more cables throughout back here. <clears throat> and if I'm not mistaken, I think with where I have my M.2 drive, that cut off two of my SATA ports. So I literally have this thing maxed out for, for SATA. Um, okay. Plugging data back in, we've got you. Okay, there's one. And let's see, where is... Oh, the other data cable I've already got run up to the, uh, to the hard drive, which should still be plugged in. Yeah, we just got to plug power back into it. Okay, so... Let's see here, is this going to work best on you? Which way is that connector angled? Okay, for a little bit better visibility here, let's spin you around. So I need to get down a little bit lower here. Look at this. And then I'm probably gonna need you. Okay, so the angle needs to be toward that way, so that one has to be the straight one, otherwise the cable's not gonna fit on it. Okay. So we've 
got that there, which I'm going to route in behind these. And then we've got you. Let me make sure the angle's down on that one. So you can actually come in behind all this stuff here and connect up right here. to you which we're going to do with this one and it should be angled in also I would think yeah okay so we connect power up to you and you know what I could do to make my life a little easier here Take and swap these two around so the cords are a little bit, or the cables are a little bit closer. Okay, there's that. And then honestly, I'm probably just going to leave this out of here because we don't need it anymore, and the extra space space behind here will be nice. Um, let's see. I think we need to finish pushing you the rest of the way up on there. I don't understand why you don't want to go. That's your new home. Take your new home and like it. Man, tucking all these wires in behind here is going to be interesting. Um, let's see. So I need you to hopefully power all three of these. I don't know if that's going to reach or not. I may have to plug in the third SATA cable here, which will mean even more fun wires and stuff. So let's go ahead with this. And get it plugged in. That should be closest to over here. Just kind of hoping. Maybe I could reach this without pulling the other connector through. Honestly, I think I'm going to have to do the third one here. I think it's going to be my only way out of this. Because these cables really don't give you enough leeway in, in the way of um, space between them to connect up multiple things. Yeah, there's no way. Okay, so here we go. One more cable in. So we don't have enough yet. Let's see. Are you SATA? Yes, you are. Okay. And you're going to power up the two drives down here on the bottom. So unless I was doing two-way SLI with 1080 TIs, There's, what, one, two, three, four cables I've left out of that whole box of stuff that came with this. that in okay next is the graphics card going in now for the fun part so we'll just pull this off of here the plastic's already been removed and everything I just to make it a little more believable, I put a cover over top of the uh, the PCIe connector down there. So let's um, let's get this reinstalled. <clears throat> the 
and then we'll run power up to it and then I'm going to show you the mess on the back side of this thing and I'm going to have to figure out how to cable manage and then I don't figure you want to be around for all that. Uh, so get this thing set up to slide back in here and get the PCI connector lined up and clicked into place. You just need to put the two screws in. It's alright if you can't see anything, you're seeing about as much as I am. <laughs> okay, there we go. Uh, this is a uh, EVGA GeForce GTX 1080 Ti for the Win 3. Um, so this is the one that's got the three uh, fans on it and then also the ICX. So it's got all the, uh, the extra temperature sensors and everything on it as well. Um, so there's that installed. Now we just need to bring power back through to it here. And I'm going to run that up underneath the card, I think. Do I want to do underneath or do I want to do over top? I feel like over top would be safer. Wouldn't have to worry about it getting into the fans. Because this card actually protrudes out past the, uh, the cable grommets. So let's, um, let's take and shift these upwards just slightly. Maybe we can get these up through here. And put you through. Okay. So there's one. all that but we'll tighten that up for now and then one additional cable right alongside it here and if you guys would give me a little more room again it would be much appreciated there's that we just need to bring you through also it's a USB 3.0 cable I wonder what that thing was okay so now Just need to bring this one around here. What am I getting into here? I feel like you're, you're fighting me and not wanting to come through there. Okay. And let's see, you will have to be right there. Angle you around here as such. Do the same with you. Except for, there we go. Like that. Push all the excess back through. Okay. And while that's not the prettiest run of cables ever, I really don't know what else to do with that. Um, all right, so before the camera battery dies again here, allow me to show you Exactly what I'm up against on the back side of this thing. I'll try to do as much of this on camera as I can. But this is what we've got on the back side. This is all the fun we get to have. <laughs> um, so let's start up here because this should be the easiest of the bunch to kind of get tied back down and in place. I want all of you over this way, out of the way of the window. So there's that. Now, now the fun begins. I honestly have no idea how all this is going to fit back in here. So bulging side panel it is, I suppose. <laughs> okay, 
let's see, what are you? You are that one. Okay, I'm gonna feed as much of these bigger cables down into the bottom of the case here as I can, because there's a little bit of extra room down there that if you can use it, use it. Maybe I can get you back around here. That way, get this. around here. I just have to get this one to lay a little bit flatter. Okay, and then hopefully, <laughs> hopefully the side panel will take care of that. Keep that flattened down enough to where that panel will actually go on. This is going to be a nightmare trying to get that thing in place. Let's see, I want that back here though. So we just want this on the other side of that cable. Pull that on around over here. And that'll lay that a little bit flatter back in there. Okay, we've got these here. We'll tuck you in behind here. And luckily, I guess if this pokes out past there a little bit, the drive should help pretty well block most of it. This here shouldn't be too hard to fix. A couple of cable ties here. These are just regular Velcro brand straps. You can buy these right off of Amazon if you you'd like to have a set for yourself. And I would highly recommend them. They make it much nicer doing this kind of thing. Good for many cable organizing projects. Like the all the cables that run along the back side of my desk for this thing are actually held in place by this kind of thing also. Okay, down here, a little ways maybe. And tie in one more. Should pretty well hold everything. <clears throat> so, for the mess I started with here, this is already tidied up quite a bit. Okay, so let's go with that. And that should be easy to fit in behind the panel. This right here is what I'm worried about. It can be interesting trying to get that all to, to fit. I think it's probably gonna, it's gonna make the side panel bulge, definitely. No, no doubt about that, but. Let's see, I don't want you out there any further than you have to be. Okay, let's give this a shot and see what happens here. Fingers crossed, guys. How many of you are already looking at this going, there is no way. <laughs> wow. We're still so far out. I feel like we're still so far out.
And it's only, it only bald just a little bit, so we're good, right? No worries. <laughs> Jeez. It's crazy. <clears throat> so, that's our uh, current finished product. I feel like we changed a whole lot here, but just enough. Yeah. Um, as far as the way the cables are right now, I don't think I can shove much more behind here than what we did. So um, I think what we've got behind here is kind of what we're stuck with. I don't know if maybe I can tuck those little teeny tiny ones down a little bit more or not. If I could, I would like to. Or at the very least, get them down underneath the... Uh, power supply cable so that they're not quite as wild looking there okay all right so this is what i've got um let's see you i feel like i had tucked underneath here a little bit better than that oh well but yeah it'll do <laughs> um so yeah this is it for the actual building portion um i'll probably switch over to actually showing you guys how to format these drives now too because i didn't do that on the original one and if you've never done it before it'd probably be nice to have a little bit of help figuring that out also so all right so before i even realized that i was doing it <laughs> i already went ahead and i've already started both these formatting um when you get to format your drives on windows 10 at least what you're going to do is you're going to get down here i just go down to cortana and then look up uh, this pc so type in this this pc comes up and then when you get up to this pc you're going to right click on it you go to manage so when you go to manage it brings up this window here for you basically and uh so you end up with this over here and what you're going to do is you're going to come down here and click on disk management when you click on disk management this over here is what will come up uh, this will show you all the different drives in the system and all the partitions that are on them like it, say they're a uh, system drive um, you have the option of partitioning these out whenever you uh, work on them here but uh, so you're gonna right click cancel the format on this one real quick we'll, uh, we'll walk through it real quick and we're going to okay so actually it's not gonna take me through the whole thing again here um, first it'll ask you to change a letter or choose a letter to, to format it under and then it's gonna take you into this screen over here that's going to give you you can label the volume uh, going to choose what file system you want. Also, um, on that first screen where you're choosing the drive letter, um, it's also going to ask you if you want to use MBR or GPT. Um, you always want to stick with GPT now because MBR was like a legacy kind of thing. So, I mean, if you're like taking this out and swapping it between back and forth between a Windows 95 computer and this, then maybe you want to use MBR or MBR, sorry. But, um, you know, for, for modern machines, you just GPT is a, a better system to work off of. As far as why, I can't recall right off the top of my head. A little bit of, you know, searching, and you ought to be able to find that just fine. As well as me, but um, right off the top of my head, I can't really pull that off. Um, apparently, NTFS is the only file system we can choose anyway. And then allocation unit size, I just leave that set on default. Um, and then I take quick format off of there. I take quick format off of there. You don't necessarily have to. It doesn't hurt anything. I'm just, I like to cause myself the most pain possible, so I take that off of there. Um, and then we're going to name this one HGST for terabyte two because you are the second drive. And then we're going to allow this to format. And this won't pop up for the first time you uh, you format your drive. Uh, this is just because um, because it had already formatted, so it's asking me to make sure I've got everything off of it before we format it, which is fine. We'll go ahead and format it. Uh, there's nothing on it anyway. So. That's how you format your drive once you get the uh, the new drive stuck in. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, leave me a little bit of feedback if you think I need to be doing anything differently. Or if you like the video, like it. If you dislike it, dislike it. Let me know. Um, and I guess we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.